my fellow makeup enthusiasts, welcome back to my perfectly healthy expression of makeup enthusiasm. My name is Lainey. Where the hell have I been? Well, real life has gotten in the way of my YouTubing. I have been Disney princessing quite a bit. I'm actually doing a Disney princess review next week. I am playing Merida and I'm very excited about that. We've been rehearsing. I've been getting costumes together. It's, it's just been a lot of really fun stuff going on in my real life. Unfortunately, that has cut into my ability to do a lot of YouTube videos. For that, I sincerely apologize. But I gotta admit, I've been having a lot of fun. Anyway, today I wanted to share with you some of the new makeup that has come into my life, some of the makeup that is on my mind, and without further ado, let's get started with the first product. This is something that I got free with purchase from Ulta. It is called Crepe Erase. I have always been high key curious about this product. It is supposed to take care of that obnoxious crepey skin that we tend to get right here as we get a little bit older and I was very skeptical about whether this would work. Now a a jar this size typically cost $54. I don't think this is a sample size. Anyway, $54 for this. I got it for free. Thank you Ulta. And then the bigger jar cost $79, which is a lot for me when it comes to something that is a gamble because these um, age regression products, these fountain of youth products are often snake oil, so I don't tend to trust them. This is good. Let me go ahead and show you. Okay, I am going to start by showing you guys a part of my makeup routine that I typically do not film, although I have never denied doing this. In fact, I know that I have specifically mentioned that I do this before I film. If I remember to, I also do this before I have a meeting, before I have a Skype call with a cute boy, not that that has happened in years. Anyway, this step is to minimize the crepey skin under my eyes. Go ahead and zoom in and I'm gonna smile real big so that the crepiness is extremely obvious and I'm just going to show you how this works. So I take a little bit, just a little bit on my finger. You don't need much. And I know that a lot of people will say you need to use your ring finger. I don't find that I have very much control when I use my ring finger. So I do use my pointer finger, but I use a very, very light hand and I just tap it and I'm going to let it sink in on its own. And while I'm waiting for this to sink in, I'm going to show you my brand new Urban Decay Vice Lipstick. This is a lip stain. The shade is wired. It is this nice red shade, although when it goes on, it is not shockingly red. This is the best lip stain that I have used ever since my beloved Vincent Longo lip stain in my sunshine somehow quit working for me. I fell out of love with it or it fell out of love with me. I'm not sure which happened, but something happened that changed the abiding love that we had. So we are no longer together. This is a legitimate replacement. And I'm not even going to blot this lip stain because I don't feel like it needs it. I also feel like the crepe erase has had time to kind of settle in. I feel like my skin has absorbed all that it needs. And now I'm going to do something that some people are going to scream at me for. Go ahead. It works for me. I'm just going to take one finger. I'm not pulling on my skin. I'm just anchoring it. And I'm going to take this finger <laughs> and I'm just going to kind of iron the crepiness, the wrinkles. Doing the same thing on the other side, just ironing those wrinkles out. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna smile again. So is it a dramatic difference? No, of course not. Most 
cosmetic creams will not give you a dramatic result and anything that claims to is probably full of shit but for me the lack of crepiness or at least the softened crepiness lasts longer with crepe erase than it does with any other product that i have used but in all honesty all you need to do to soften the appearance of crepey skin under the eyes is use some kind of moisturizer. Will it last all day? No. Will it even last an hour? Maybe not. This will, but most products, no. They will not last that long. But if you need it for just a picture or a quick meeting, this is your friend. So I mentioned in my first impressions video of the Jeffree Star Bloodlust palette that I loved the shade Purple Wedding, I'm sorry, Scandal Water, but I was having trouble getting it to work. So I'm taking a Sigma brush. This is a fairly dense brush, and I'm going to pick up a good amount of Scandal Water and see what that looks like on the eye. In fact, I'm going to use this eye. So you see what I mean? Not great. Enter the Urban Decay Finger Brush. I'm gonna put down the palette and show you this brush up close. So it is super densely packed, it's very stubby, it mimics a fingertip, but you have a lot more control with this brush than you would with your little grubby finger. So I'm gonna use this brush, get it nice and coated, and wow, that was very enunciated. Sometimes I over enunciate and then other times I under enunciate. You just can't be perfect. So I'm going to go in on this eye with the Urban Decay finger brush using the same shade. Okay, so obviously I have not had a chance to blend it, but I mean, look at the difference in application. It actually pops on this eye. It actually shows up. So let's just go over this with the finger brush and try to make these sides even. And let me just add that I am a notorious finger applier. I have no problems with it. I know that some people find it kind of um, awkward or they find it gross to put their fingers in their eyeshadow. For those people, this baby would be a great solution. But even for someone like me who has no qualms about sticking her grubby little fingers in an eyeshadow palette and smearing the eyeshadow on her eye with her finger, this is better. It Honestly, it's just more precision. It's just more precision. Uh, sorry, you guys, it's 2 a.m. There is more precision with this brush. I, It's just great. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to complete this eye look. It's going to be really simple. And then I am going to show you some shitty ass eyeliner. And here's the finished eye look. Just so you know, I used Scandal Water in the outer V. I used High King in the middle. And I used Royal Pain in the inner corner. It's a very simple look. I actually have a picture of it on Instagram. And yes, one of these days I will get around to doing a multiple looks video with the Bloodlust palette, but that day is not today. Today I am going to tell you about the shittiest eyeliner I have tried in ages. Yes, the Urban Decay Wired Dual Ended Eyeliner. It has this shifty duochrome kind of um, sponge tip applicator bit on one end. And then it has this very basic, not very good liquid liner on the other end. So let's start with the liquid liner. I mean, you can already see it's kind of transferring underneath my eye. I've got mask mascara goop, or rather in this case, eyeliner goop, in my inner corner already. Chandler Bing would never date me. So basically, it is not quick drying. It is messy. I have used cheap ass drugstore liquid liners that performed way better than this crap. And look how easily that wiped off my hand. The lip stain will not come 
off, but the eyeliner came off in one swipe. It, it's not good. It's just not good. And let me get to the worst part. The worst part is this sponge tip applicator. I usually love sponge tip applicators, but this is the blue shade. I will put the name of it right here because I didn't bother to memorize it because it's garbage. So this is supposed to give you kind of a holographic, iridescent, really cool, sparkly, edgy effect. Let's see what it actually looks like. So as you can see, most of the sparkles, and I wouldn't call this iridescent, I would just call this finely milled glitter. It went on my lashes and it went underneath my eye. So it's gonna fuck up my crepe erase. Damn it. So I'm just going to leave this shitty, shitty boom boom on the top of my eye. I'm going to go into my Kat Von D Original Alchemist palette. This was the pioneer in this sort of uh, innovative technology. I am going to take the shade Sapphire, that is the blue shade, and I'm going to put that over the top of this liquid liner. Oh, but I feel like that shitty Urban Decay glittery mess is kind of interfering with this. So I am going to try my best to wipe this away. I am going to use some good black eyeliner and I am going to again attempt to use the Kat Von D Alchemist liner. And now we have good black liner, not expertly applied, but that is not the point of this video. I just used my tried and true MAC Carbon with an angled brush. I haven't done that in years, but that was my preferred method for at least a decade. I'm going to go back into Sapphire and we're going to see if we can make this look good. Zoom on in and let's see how the Kat Von D Alchemist powder looks over good black liner. Also keep in mind that this palette is about two years old. I probably need to replace it, but honestly from the bottom of my heart, where did that shitty liner go? If you are tempted to buy one of these, save your money. It is not worth it. This is on sale for 10 bucks on the Sephora website and I believe also on the KVD website. Just get this if you were going for this type of look. Or let's put some black eyeliner on this eye and I'm going to show you an even better technique. And now over this perfectly imperfect wretched black winged liner, I sentence you beautiful people to death. And I'm not talking about execution, I'm talking about the beautiful multi-chrome shadow by Notoriously Morbid, named for the peachy keen member of the Endless, sitting right there behind me, Death. Let's see how she looks. And on a final note, I feel like the difference between the Notoriously Morbid Multi-Chrome on this eye and the Kat Von D Alchemist Duo Chrome on this eye, which has a little bit more sparkle, is ultimately a matter of preference. But any way you slice it, they are better than this pile of hot garbage. And I hope you guys didn't think that I was shitting all over Urban Decay. I have nothing but glorious things to say about this finger brush. I love it. I absolutely adore the Vice lip stain. Like I said, this is replacing my all-time favorite lip stain. So I am super happy to have these in my possession. Just really don't like the eyeliner. Moving on to lashes. I got some Glam Light Burger Slider Lashes. These are in Bacon Cheese Bacon Cheeseburger. Bacon Cheeseburger. They are pre-trimmed. I am going to pop them on off camera. And then of course we have to talk about the Extreme Frost Highlighter in Choking on Ice from the Jeffree Star Bloodlust Collection. I'm a little bit embarrassed. I thought I was filming myself applying this. I said some arguably funny things while I was applying this. I wasn't filming. When I went back to watch the footage, I was sipping Diet Coke and picking my nose. Anyway, let's try to recreate it. Okay, let's pop this on. 
And let me see if I can remember what I said. I talked about going ham with your highlighter and how we all like to go ham with our highlighter from time to time. This is beyond ham. This is pig on a spit. This is pig on a spit with a side of pineapple and poi. This is going full luau. And for the record, I went to a luau when I was little and there was a pig on a spit. I found it very disturbing. I refused to eat any pork. I demanded mac and cheese. And to this day, I get very uncomfortable when I see a pig on a spit. I have a friend who has a pet pig. I just went to his birthday party. I'm an animal rights activist. I promise you I have issues with that. But aside from that reference, let's talk about alien references. So we can talk about alien slut highlighter. This is beyond an alien slut. This is an entire alien brothel on this cheek and another alien brothel, brothel, <laughs> brothel on this cheek. This highlighter is amazing. I feel like everyone on the planet should have some kind of crazy in your face highlighter highlighter in their collection, even if they don't go luau very often. Was this worth $50? Pfft, yeah. And now that I have shown you all of my new goodies, let's talk about the makeup on my mind. First and foremost, Fenty is coming out with cream products cream blushes, both in compact form and in matchstick form, cream contour, I think there's a new cream highlighter, not cream highlighter, a new matchstick highlighter. I'm here for it. I want it all. So, so excited for that. Also, ColourPop recently released a Sailor Moon collab. I was interested, I forgot to mention it in my last Makeup On My Mind video, so I guess maybe it wasn't that much on my mind, but the palette looked remarkably similar to the Sugar Pill Fun Size Mini video game themed kitty cat palette, which I have and love. So I wasn't gonna get the palette, but I really wanted one of the blushes and I really wanted one of the glitters. They are sold out. As of now, which is March the 11th, they are still not back in stock, so maybe one of these days I will have them, maybe not. No big deal either way, but I did snag the full beat, the set of makeup sponges. And the reason I bought that was because I'm about to need to replace a bunch of makeup sponges. This was a really good value, and generally ColourPop makes very good product, so I'm, I have high hopes for this. And then I also bought a body highlighter and a pair of lashes to bump up the total of my cart so that I could get free shipping. Don't judge me. What else is on my mind? Cleona Cosmetics. I did place an order for a few of the vibrant multi-chromes. Those are the multi-chromes with a lighter base as opposed to a darker base. That just works better for my eye shape and for my taste. So I'm excited to get those. Those will be here in June, so it's gonna be a while. In the meantime, I have a beautiful multi-chrome from Notoriously Morbid called Dangerous Type that I have been wearing. Speaking of Notoriously Morbid, I did order their mystery bag. It's called Luck of the Rainbow, I believe. It was $26. You know how I feel about mystery bags. I'm not a big fan of them, but Notoriously Morbid very, very rarely lets me down. So I feel like that's going to be a really fun unboxing. You guys seem to like it when I do unboxings. I would love to do more just because it's fun to do those videos and those videos do get views. I just don't want to deal with the crap that builds up in my room that I don't use when I get too many mystery bags. Yeah, understand? And let's see, what else can I talk about? Perfume. Okay. I was in Saks Fifth, Fifth Avenue yesterday. I happened to be in Houston having lunch with some friends. I stopped by the Galleria on my way home. I had every intention of trying on a bunch of bougie outfits instead of trying on clothes. I tried on perfume. I stopped at the Tom Ford counter and I sprayed Lost Cherry. I've always been curious about this fragrance. I've never actually smelled it. When I put it on, whew, choirs of angels, I love it as much, if not more, than I love Lush's Rentless. Rentless. 
I can never say that word, but it's, it's amazing. It smells so good on me specifically. I had strangers following me around, chasing me down, going, Miss, what perfume are you wearing? It smells so amazing. So apparently that's my scent. Lost Cherry and I are soulmates. I just have to work up the $335 that it's going to take for me to get it. So I'm going to go jack off to the thought of Lost Cherry and thank you guys so very much for joining me. Follow me on Instagram. I will follow you back. Throw me a pity like. Give me some encouragement to make some more videos. Very special shout out to you if you are watching this video on the toilet. And until next time, enjoy your joy responsibly.